Hey, Hormones Balance community. I would love to talk to you about vitamin D today, not just through supplementation, but also through uh, how do you get it from the sun? Because it's not as straightforward as just going out there in the sun and laying there for 20 minutes and, you know, and magic happens. Uh, I wish it was that simple. And so if you, uh, you know, like sometimes I do see those magazine pieces, they go, go out in the sun and be there in 20 minutes and and you're gonna give you replenish with 10,000 units of vitamin D. Uh, <laughs> I wanna show you today, it depends actually on a lot of things. Your latitude, um, your altitude, the skin of your, uh, the color of your skin is gonna depend on which time of the year it is and where the sun is. And so a lot of different factors like that. So let's, let's talk about that. And um, I am gonna be, um, and actually what prompted me to talk about vitamin D today is because a really interesting piece of research just come out that shows the correlation between people with different levels of vitamin D and, uh, and how badly they reacted to uh, the coronavirus. And so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen with you um, so that you can, you can see a few things that I wanna um, share with you today. And this is all coming from my article, uh, called How to Replenish Your Vitamin D Levels. And uh, Taylor, my colleague who's here with us today, she's gonna post the article link so you can, you can view all of them here. And so this is the, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you um, how incredible uh, the correlation is between vitamin D and Corona. And this is from a research that just come out. And so I'm assuming you can see my slides, yes? So <clears throat> let me just take a look of who is buzzing me. Um, uh, Taylor, yes, if you could pop questions into Skype. So, hey, you guys, so uh, pop your questions and then towards like the middle or so, uh, I will be able to uh, take your answers. I'll do, uh, answer your questions rather. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you this really cool graph uh, that just came out and we have the, uh, the link to uh, the study right at the bottom here. You can see it just, just, just came out literally less than a month ago. And it shows you that people who were with mild symptoms on the, the bar on the right here, um, were showing mild symptoms. They were, they had more than 30 nanogram per milliliter of vitamin D, uh, which in actually in functional medicine, we consider that still to be on the low side. And I'm gonna talk about that in, uh, in, in a second. But so that's really interesting, right? That it wasn't even all that high. Like if I'm, if, if mine is like 35 nanograms a milliliter, I would consider that to be low actually. So people with like Hashimoto's disease, Graves disease, people with, women with any autoimmune diseases actually always wanna <clears throat> strive for reaching something like between 60 and 80. Those are the optimal numbers, right? So these people were not even in optimal levels. And so imagine like if you are in the optimal levels, um, how much milder would your symptoms possibly be uh, with corona. This is a quite a good study of over, <clears throat> you can see the number of subjects was 212, so pretty sizable uh, cohort. And then look at those ones who are critical, right? People who are critical had everything below 20 and between 20 and, and 29. Was also, this is super, super low. I mean, those are people who are, you know, like white skin, never leaves the house, never gets out in the sun, does not supplement, poor diet, right? Like just all of those things combined. Um, you know, I really do believe that one of the things that's gonna come out from this pandemic is just like a whole realization that overall good health really is gonna help you. Um, you know, not in saying not catching it, but um, sailing through it versus really struggling through it. Okay, so this is the first thing. So this is really what kind of prompted me to start thinking about vitamin D all over again. And hey, guess what? So finally the sun is out. I don't know where you are, but so let me know, is there a sun? where you are right now. In Colorado, um, spring and summer is very slow to come. We've been, we just like a two weeks ago, we were snowed in. And so today, finally, we have beautiful sunny days that actually allows us to go outside. So well, I wanna just share with you, like what's the big deal about vitamin D in the first place, right? And, you know, and so the article that Taylor posted uh, will show you that it can just, I'm just gonna run through the list of things everything from lowering Hashimoto's antibodies. So we are citing a study here um, that shows that women who are taking, um, let me just take a look at the doses. It wasn't even very high. It was, um, 
the doses were given between 1,200 to 4,000 units of vitamin D3 for four months. And 83% uh, of the subjects experienced 20% drops in the TPO antibodies, the so tyroperoxidase uh, antibodies. And remember, they, they, you know, a good study would then not allow people to do anything else but that, right? So that's a pretty significant drop if it's just due to vitamin D. So we're assuming they didn't change their diet, they didn't change their stress levels, they didn't add any selenium in, et cetera, et cetera, right? Which can also be contributing towards dropping antibodies. So that's a really huge one. The other thing is, you know, many of you are dealing here with osteopenia, osteoporosis, because that's our target audience. Like our, you know, the, 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 peop, the women who follow us here are typically 45 to 65. So a lot of times around the 55 age mark, that's when we start developing osteopenia, osteoporosis. And guess what? Vitamin D3 is essential together one with K2, calcium, uh, magnesium, and boron are all really essential in bringing the calcium into the bones and building bones. And so vitamin D, again, for that is non-negotiable. The other thing is for you to consider, again, many of you here have a history of breast cancer. And so um, we are showing here in this article studies that not only does vitamin D was showing it to be very, very low in breast, patient, breast cancer patients, um, but also shows that a significant amount of sufficient amounts of vitamin D3 can actually act on the cancer in what we call apoptosis, which basically means that it, pro it causes the uh, cancer cells to kill themselves, which is pretty amazing. The other thing is many of you might know that people with diabetes and prediabetes or women who struggle with blood sugar levels, and this is pretty significant for you know, women in perimenopause, menopause, where we also start building a lot of belly fat. And that happens because your blood sugar levels um, go significantly higher. And guess what? Vitamin D is one of the vitamins that is essential in regulating, in stimulating your cells to open up and, and bring the glucose in together with insulin. And so um, so again, really important in, if you want to lose weight, you might want to, in a long way, think about it, the vitamin D3 supplementation can actually help with that. It's hugely anti-inflammatory. Uh, it can reverse estrogen dominance. I'm just going to quickly go through that. It's got anti-depressant uh, properties. Many of you might have heard, uh, you, you know, about like how you, you might be experiencing that yourself, like how during winter, for example, a lot of people tend to be very depressed. And we think it's, is because I spend a lot of time indoors and it's cold and I don't like it. I feel very contracted, but a lot of people don't realize it's actually vitamin D3 or vitamin D deficiency is what causes that inflammation. Uh, when Dr. Kelly Brogan, the, the very well-known psychiatrist works with um, correcting different deficiencies for people who wanna get off antidepressants, vitamin D3 is the first thing that she does to supplement. It reverses autoimmunity, so I talked about that. It helps your gut bacteria to, to produce B, B5. And B5 is um, really helpful with uh, uh, also hormone production, helps with hair loss, uh, prevents and reverses anemia, improves sleep, okay? So those are some of the, uh, some of the benefits of vitamin uh, D. And I would say, you know, this is like one of those things that is absolutely non-negotiable. <laughs> and yet so many of us are so, so deficient. So. Um, I, I did see a comment from one of the ladies in our private group on Thrivers that said that she's chronically depleted in vitamin D no matter what she does. And that's a really interesting point because that's my problem too. And one way to know <clears throat> if that happens is, um, is most likely is that you might be having uh, something called the DV, v, sorry, VDR, so vitamin D receptor, VDR mutation. And you can do that, you, could, you would know that through doing genetic testing. Um, so people who have, for example, I have a double mutation on that receptor. And so for me to produce vitamin D, it happens really, really, really slowly. And that's one of the many reasons why I'm very high risk for breast cancer. So with people like that, we have to do two things. One is take higher doses of supplementation. So like talking about like I take 10,000 units a day. And once a week, I'll do 50,000. And, and then combine that with actually going out there and getting sufficient sun. And so in winter, that's a useless proposition because or, uh, endeavor because it's not gonna, um, you're not gonna get any vitamin D. And I'm gonna show you in a second, how do you know that uh, in winter in, in most of the North hemisphere uh, places. 
So before I talk about that, I want to just cover about testing. And um, so the first thing is, I think you should really test your vitamin D levels just to know where you are, right? Don't assume, um, and, the, and a lot of people, for some strange reason, assume that if you have a darker skin, you're actually okay. It's actually the opposite. The darker skin you have, the harder it is to get vitamin D. So for example, African-Americans are even more depleted than white Caucasians because they need a lot more sun in order to produce vitamin D. Okay, let me share my, my screen one more time and I wanna show you how do you, um, <clears throat> how do you, uh, where do you test? So talk to your doctor, that's one option you can easily do. Talk to your doctor, a lot of insurance companies will cover that because they do realize even the most allopathic, conventional, stubborn, conservative doctors actually uh, are well aware of that. So, so push your doctor to get that done. That's a really simple test. And if for whatever reason you can't, then go to yourlabwork.com slash hormones balance. They've created a panel for us here. If you, so if you scroll to the bottom of this page, right? Or somewhere, sorry, like, yeah, it is towards the bottom. And you go on the nutrient panel, <clears throat> you can see you can order vitamin D here yourself without going through your physician. Um, and it only costs $50, okay? Uh, you can of course order a lot of other tests here too, but start off with, with this one here, okay? Um, the only exemption is that, well, the only, sorry, uh, exception is New York, New Jersey. I believe it's a, a few other states. Let me see if we mentioned that here. Uh, they didn't. <clears throat> uh, Connecticut, I believe. And one more, uh, Mary, probably Maryland does not allow uh, self-testing, but if you're any other state, you can, you can do that right here. Okay. So the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is really important to understand the functional medicine ranges versus like, you know, the stuff that you get from the lab, okay? So a lot of times when you get your results of any test, uh, whether it's your vitamin B12 and D and magnesium levels or your thyroid numbers, whatever, you get your labs and you look at the, you look at your results and then that you look at the range that you should be in. Those ranges, for some things that are okay, for a lot of other things, including the thyroid, including vitamin D, vitamin B12, these ranges are not for healthy people. They are for barely functioning people. <laughs> you know, we don't want to just live here. We want to live and thrive here in the hormones balanced community, right? So you don't want to look at um, the healthy blood levels. Will, they will tell you is between 30 to 100. Um, and functional medicine doesn't see it that way. We see it as healthy people should be between 60 to 80 nanograms uh, by milliliters, by milli, in, a, in a milliliter, okay? So in order to accomplish that, it's kind of like you're gonna do the, 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 the dance between, I wanna get some from the sun, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. And some of it, especially in winter months, I wanna be supplementing. And then I'll suggest, that's why I suggest test now, get your baseline, do all the sun exposure over the sum, uh, summer, uh, maybe supplement a little bit if you need to, <clears throat> and then retest um, after the summer. So give yourself, it, it's, you need about three to four months to replenish your vitamin D levels. It takes, it takes time, it's not very quick. Okay, so what I wanna show you is, there is also a self-check self uh, self list here on, on our website. So I'll let you go and take a look at that. I'm not gonna go over that together. Um, I'm just gonna say buy vitamin D and food, really difficult to get it from food. You get, can get it from things like cod oil, cod liver oil, sockeye salmon, um, but all of those amounts are really low <clears throat> or like, you know, pork, <clears throat> excuse me, pork fat. <clears throat> Nobody's gonna do that, right? Okay, so I wanna show you, first of all, the really cool uh, chart here that we have on the web, on this, in this article called the Sunshine Calendar. And the Sunshine Calendar shows you that um, when it's an empty uh, uh, a circle like that, you're basically getting no vitamin D whatsoever. You're not producing any. Uh, in the low sunshine is the yellow ones. And then you have the moderate sunshine and the red dot is like when you're getting decent sun, uh, vitamin. Now they say here sufficient vitamin D. I really wish they clarify what that meant, but they don't. But I have a solution for you though. Don't worry. I'll show you that in a second. There's a really cool app you can download to figure that out. So as you can see, just overall, <clears throat> like right now we are in May, right? So depending on the latitude you're at, 
for example, I'm at, um, I'm like right here where New York is, so I'm in this line right here. In May, it's a, it's a very moderate amount of vitamin D and I will have to be out for 20 minutes. And they also don't say how, what's the percentage of your body exposure, which is something we're gonna talk about, right? So it's a difference, like the question is, do you just go out there like this, you know, like having a bit of hand exposure, face, a little bit of chest, right, and legs? Or does it, does it mean 30 minutes like butt naked or bikini, right? Which one, right? So we'll, we'll come to this in a second. But this chart, I think, is better than nothing. It just shows you that, for example, if you're living in New York, right, you are pretty much uh, like January, February, like pretty much, um, you know, like look at that. September, October, you, have, you get some. And then November, December, January. So these four months, you're getting no vitamin D whatsoever. You're getting some vitamin D in the March, April, May time frame, right? And really that the time when you really produce is the June, July, August, right? And so look at where you are, and then this is a cool chart that you can use. Now, the other thing that makes can make a difference is the altitude you're on, right? The higher you are, that's like common sense, will tell you the closer you are to the sun. So of course you're gonna get more vitamin D. And Due to the light right now, you may not see this, but actually I got quite a lot of sunlight already. I was working outside yesterday, uh, just like set up my office outside, which is so nice to do. And, um, and so I, I think I got quite a lot of uh, vitamin B, but I, I, can, I, I can also get burned really easily up here. So I, ha I have to be really careful with that. Okay, so I wanna show you a really cool app that you can download if you have a smartphone. And this is as much as I hate the smartphone radiation issues and whatever, but I think like when it comes to uh, certain things like this, it's, it can be super helpful. So um, the how much vitamin D you can get, you get and your body is able to produce will depend on, like I already mentioned, skin color. It depends the latitude you're at. It depends on your altitude. It depends on your um, at the time of the year it is, okay? So in order to, so it kind of becomes complicated, right? And so the cool thing is that there is this app called D-Minder. And this is, I just literally downloaded it today and I updated this website. So D-Minder is like minding, I guess, vitamin D. That's what it is. So go to your app store, download it. And based on your location, it will tell you, and the time of the year, because of course it knows what the date today is, it will tell you how much sun you can get during this, this, this hour. And it also asks you what skin color you are. It would also ask you what's the um, amount of skin exposure that you are doing while sunbathing, okay? And mind you here, this is none of it is we are talking about getting grilled in the sun for two hours. Nobody's asking you to lay in the sun for two hours. This is of course also assuming you're not using any sunblock. And uh, if you're worried about skin cancer, I'm gonna address that in a second because uh, interestingly, most people who have skin cancer have very low vitamin D levels. So, um, so yeah, so this is a really, really cool app. And I suggest get that because that's, it's really easy to use. And this will tell you, so this is like, for example, it just told me that with my current, I just entered that I was in my t-shirt, but long pants. And so I'm getting about 30 nanogram per, per milliliter uh, with the current exposure that I'm, I was looking at, right? So that's not um, that's not a, a, an awful lot. And so I guess I need to get butt naked and go out there in a the balcony and just lay down for 15, 20 minutes. Another really cool way of knowing uh, whether, you know, if you are just like, you out on a walk and you think like, should I take my top off or not? You know, one way that you can know whether you're going to get any vitamin D or not is looking at what we call the shadow rule. The shadow rule is really cool because if the shadow is longer than you, then it basically means you're not gonna produce any vitamin D whatsoever. If the shadow is shorter than you, that's most likely is because the sun is right above you. And this is the time when you, it's gonna, you're gonna be getting the best exposure. Uh, this, is, this is the time when you actually, you will be able to produce vitamin D. How much? Again, it depends on, like I said, your skin color, and it's gonna depend on how much exposure you're giving your body, okay? So, um, so just to give you like a little idea of the of a chart that I also just up, uh, uploaded to. Let me just make this larger so you guys can see. So, if you just like like her with a long sweater and pants and just having hands and face exposure, then you're only exposing ten percent of your body, right? 
And then short sleeve will be 16%, sleeveless dress, shorter dress, right? Above the knee is 40%. If you're in shorts, it's 66. In the bikini, it's 80. Get butt naked is 100%, right? So I think this is a really cool um, way of knowing of how to, um, you know, what, what, what does that mean? Oops. Yeah, that's, that's so good. So I think, um, I think that's all in terms of the charts that I wanted to show you today. And yeah, let me address the vitamin D issue because, sorry, the skin cancer, cancer issue. You know, um, so interestingly, my sister had um, menoloma and a few years ago, and um, she is, uh, and of course, you know, her oncologists have hammered to her that she has to completely avoid the sun and yada, 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 right? Um, and what she was doing, and that, that wasn't serving her really well. She had a recurrence. And so we corrected that. She started checking her vitamin D levels on a regular basis. And she's taking high doses because she has the same mutation as me. So she's taking high doses. She lives in Poland, which is same as New York, very little sunlight, right? So like during winter, you're not gonna, she's not gonna produce anything at all. And then supplementing with high doses of vitamin D. And that has been really helping her a lot and cross fingers no uh, recurrence of menoloma uh, with her in her case. And that's a tip. And so you have to remember that there are sometimes industries that are being created around fear of certain things and sun is include, you know, sun exposure is one of them. Of course, if you, you know, where did it all come from, right? It came from 1980s, 1990s obsession with going out there to the beach and roasting yourself in the sun for hours at a time. I'm not talking about that kind of sun exposure. So you know, I, I, there's always somebody who's going to come on and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You are killing women, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> if, if, yeah, if I didn't research that properly, I would have never said that. So, so do your research as well, especially if you have a history of skin cancer, you will see that, that this is, um, um, and the connection between vitamin D it's very highly correlated that you are actually low on vitamin D and, you know, if sun is just scares the heck out of you, and it gives it creates more you know stress than actual pleasure then i'll say then just the panel supplementation you know uh, oh yeah there's one more thing i want to share with you which i think is really important in that is and that's not to intimidate you in any way this is just to share with you uh, some facts so vitamin d um, needs a lot of cofactors in order for it to work and i want to show you like for example, from the context of, let me just click on this and make this larger so, every, so you guys can see this better. I think many of you are probably watching this on your cell phone. I'm not gonna go through every detail, but I know it's kind of intimidating, but the takeaway here, just what I wanna show you is if a path pathogen enters your body and the immune system needs to mobilize to fight it off, you have a few, you know, you have um, the innate immune system, right? Then you have the inflammatory response to it, but then also you have the adaptive immune uh, response. And as you can see, when it comes to um, every one of these processes here that happens, right? Vitamin D is almost in every one of them. It's right in here, it's here, it's inhibitory actions, it's in here, it's in here. And so the list just goes on and on. But you can see, apart from vitamin D, there is also other vitamins and minerals, such as, for example, zinc and magnesium and selenium and copper and some levels of iron that are necessary in order for the immune system to work overall. So as much as I'm a big fan of supplementing with vitamin D, getting out there in the sun and getting it from the sun to get your levels up between the 60 to 80 nanogram uh, per milliliter, Sometimes it's not completely possible, especially in winter months, or some of you, like I said, with the mutations, it's going to be very hard to do that. I know that sun alone doesn't help me. Um, and I did that experiment two years ago. I was in Sicily. I did not supplement with vitamin D. I just sat out there in the sun. I was butt naked almost every day, 20 minutes out in my garden. And, um, and I came back and my levels were low. So, but when I do that combined with, a vit with vitamin D, the 10,000 units, that's when I'm, I managed to replenish it. And, um, and get up and I'm typically hovering around the 45, 55. I've never actually, believe it or not, managed to hit 60. Um, so, you know, that's something I guess I should talk to my doctor about whether I could go up to maybe 20,000 units a day, every other day. Anyway, so what I'm saying here, if you look at this chart is that apart from vitamin D, vitamin D needs other cofactors, we call it, they need 
it's a little bit like you can't fight the war yourself. You need to have support, right, of other soldiers. And so it's a little bit like that here too. And for that reason, um, you know, it's that this, I think the, the takeaway from this is two, is two prong. One is that you need a really complete, rich diet that comes with meat, animal proteins, especially your, your um, like your iron and your um, vitamin B12 from food is going to come from all the livers and organ meats, uh, but also just from, you know, some, to some levels from the actual tissue. So just meat, all the steaks and stuff. Um, plenty of vegetables, right? Selenium will come from nuts, including Brazil nuts. Um, so this is, you know, I think that's the point that I'm trying to drive across. And um, uh, in terms of, because we always got this question, in terms of supplements, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, one of the things is that taking vitamin D, like I said, that's one option. The other thing is that, um, you know, I think during this time, it also might be a good idea to add a, a multivitamin if you're taking one. Not all multi, multi, multivitamins are the same. Uh, a lot of them are really poorly made, very poor quality. One way to know that your vitamin D, sorry, your vitamin, your multivitamin is poorly made is that it contains things like magnesium oxide. That's a dead giveaway. Um, instead of using folate, it uses folic acid, right? Uh, maybe a third thing you want to look at is instead of using, like it uses um, B12 is going to come in cyano cobalamin version. So the cyano, like cyanide, right? You don't want that you want it to come in a methylcobalamin version. So those are a, come, a few things that you can look at your multivitamin. And if you're looking for one that you haven't uh, tried yet, or you, you're looking at changing a multivitamin and you wanna give it a shot with a really good one, we have something called the metabolic multi. So you can try that. It has, apart from all the vitamins that are necessary to assist D3, it also comes with um, all the metabolic, meaning that it helps to stabilize and increase your metabolism. So if you have weight issues and blood sugar balance problems, that's the most perfect multivitamins, uh, multivitamin that you can add on. We also have a D3. If you want to, if you guys want to support us and uh, get, if you're running low on vitamin D3, then just get it from us. It's in a liquid form and it comes also with K1 and K2 vitamins. So for those of you who have bone issues um, or, you know, bone issues, osteoporosis issues or osteopenia, that's a really great way of adding in. Um, so vitamin D3 then gets into the bones a lot better and supports your uh, calcium magnesium boron to build strong bones uh, through the K1 and K2. So that's our populations, D3 with K1 and K2. Okay. So that's what I have for today. I hope this is helpful. Let me just pop over and see what questions we are getting from you guys. Uh, so Carla is asking, can you get too much of vitamin D? So Carla, the answer is depends on, um, that's what is, uh, they showed studies that it's, there is such a thing as toxicity with vitamin D. However, um, the interesting thing is that uh, none of my colleagues, and I ask around about that, none of my colleagues including myself, have ever seen anybody really overdose on vitamin three or, or get really sick from it. Um, and because so many people were um, so sick, uh, are so sick because of a deficiency, I, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. You know, if you're planning to take like 50,000 units, 100,000 units, I would say work with a functional doctor to guide you through that. Um, but if you are low right now, the chances of you overdosing is very minimal. The also, But also remember that it's also really important to combine the vitamin D with a really rich diet or a really good multivitamin. That's going to help even more. Teresa is asking, yes, but supplementation causes kidney stones. Um, can you show me some study on that? And what kind of supplementation? Not all supplements are made the same. I have never, ever had anybody writing to us saying they get kidney stones. And kidney stones, remember, are caused by oxalic acid buildup. And that's what kidney stones are made of as oxalic um, acid and oxalates come from actually a, more caused by diet than anything else and a poor gut health where we are not able to break down those oxalates and oxalates will be things like a lot of nuts and seeds cacao for example uh, a lot of the grains contain oxalic acid so Theresa, i think that's not a correct statement sandra is saying how about in my area when we have 100 to 115 fahrenheit how long can can me in the sun and at what time so sandra get the app that i mentioned uh, M, uh, sorry, D-Minder, so D-M-I-N-D-E-R, 
um, Taylor, could you post that, the app to get? We can't post the link because you've got to go to your app store depending on whether you're using Android or iPhone and then get it there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kirk is asking, all Canadians should supplement. I agree. We are too far from the equator to get adequate amounts of sun exposure. Kirk, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Patricia is saying, I just need my levels taken. They're all the way down to seven. I just had my levels taken. They're all, they, oh, they are all the way down to seven. Oh, wow, Patricia, that is, you know, that is really low. And this is, I mean, like, get your, get, get your, uh, your vitamin D like right now, start right away. Uh, Shelly saying, thank you, Magdalena, great presentation. Would you tell us where I can get access to the great charts of the latitude amounts of sun? Yeah, so Shelly, uh, it's on the link that Taylor posted um, and that's the vitamin D article on my blog. You mentioned that you were going to touch on sunscreen. I did not say that. Um, did I? I, was, I thought I said I was going to talk about. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, sure. So, okay. So let's talk about sunscreen. Um, and it's basically, you know, I am, I definitely am a big fan of sunscreen, um, except for the 20 minutes. Let's just say that the app says for you to replenish your vitamin D levels, you need to be out, let's say 20 minutes uh, between 10 and 2 p.m., 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., right? So you go outside, get your, get your dose, and, uh, and then you want to go outside again, right? Slap on your sunscreen. That's, and that's basically that. We're going to do, um, I think, you know, with the time is that time is right now for that. We're going to do a little expose on sunscreens. There's a lot of really, really toxic ones, you guys. So I want to I wanna do some education on which sunscreens to pick and how. Um, I will certainly not be touching you know, things like all the Neutrogena and the banana boats and all those that smell of coconuts and whatever else. I mean, all of that stuff is super, super toxic. So uh, um, if you just want a quick tip, just go to ewg.org and look for sunscreen. They always have some um, rankings of the safest sunscreens right there. But we'll do, we do an article probably in a couple of weeks. That reminds me, it's a good time to do that now. Okay, Taylor, do we have any other questions? Um, oh, are we good? And we can wrap up for the weekend. <laughs> um, let's see, I'm just looking at. Yeah, if you guys want to do a reply, we, everything is always available on all the videos of Facebook Lives in the past. They are always available under videos or life on the left side when you have the whole menu of things. Um, I love that you have been talk about every everything way before they start talking about it in the news reports, Karen saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, in, in fact, I mean all the all of all of us in, you know, Karen, thank you for the comment. And and I think that's not this is just for not just about Corona, but pretty much, you know, like we've been as practitioners, we've been talking about like for example, BPAs being highly harmful uh, for years and years and years. And the FDA finally came up with that a few years ago, right? After like 10 years of being pastured and shown studies. So yeah, so I, I say don't wait for the news reports, just do your own research and follow whoever you think is worth uh, following and, and just take the advice from there. All right, you guys, I wanna wish you a very, very happy weekend and uh, get your vitamin D up uh, if you can, if you're in a good spot and I will see you next week. Bye for now.